Hello friends, my name is Adam. My name is Sherry. Welcome to the Leg Life Podcast. You guys, this is the first official episode. Sherry Beth, what do you think about this? I'm excited. Some of you guys will know, this is our second foray. <laughs> yes, it is. Into the podcast world. Uh, fingers crossed, this will be a more successful venture than our very first one. Well, sure. The first one, if you guys remember, was called Spill the Teacups. I still maintain it's a great name. It's a fantastic name. The problem, you guys, is that it kind of pigeonholed us into just talking about Disney stuff. And if you know, the reason we named our YouTube channel Leg Life was that we wanted the opportunity to share with you guys all aspects of our life. Yep, more than just Disney. Exactly. And, and so here on this podcast, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to talk about things that we love, things that we know, things that we just want to have deeper conversations about, maybe things that we touch on in our videos. Yeah, but I feel like some of the videos are not really conducive to like having a conversation. And I feel like that's kind of what this will be. Super excited about this. When we were trying to think about what in the world we should talk about for our very first topic, we figured, you know what? It's the first of the year. Mm -hmm. This is something that we talked about, or at least touched on, in uh, kind of our 2021 sort of um, resolutions, goals vlog. Yep. We thought, you know what? Let's talk about New Year's resolutions. Let's deep dive into that a little bit. Let's deep dive into that. Let's deep dive into goals. Let's deep dive into why we don't even like the term (laughs) New Year's resolutions. Right. Cherry Beth. Yeah. When you hear that term... What do you think? What do you feel? It's a little bit twofold for me. I feel like there's part of me that is excited. Like a, a resolution is just like this new start and it's kind of a exciting thing. But I feel like resolutions have also just become synonymous with failure. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I don't really like to use the term New Year's resolution. I just feel like it kind of I sets us up to fail. That's... And I feel like it's kind of easy to just be like, ah, that was my New Year's resolution. Day one, eh, I, you know, I, I failed it, whatever. And I feel like with goals, you can, it's like a long-term kind of thing. It's a year-long thing. That's exactly my thought. As we were kind of talking about this, um, New Year's resolutions feel very January to me. Yeah. Right? I feel like uh, I, I blow it the first couple weeks in January, and then it's like, well, that resolution is done. Whereas if I look at it sort of an entire year, even if I mess up January, February, March, April, May, <laughs> like like I've still got half the year to catch up and make my goal for the year a reality. Yep. Right? Whereas resolutions feel very kind of early in the year. Yeah. I just feel like it's easy to scrap them when you have failed them once. That's exactly right. Like January 2nd, you didn't do what you said you were going to do every day and eh, it's fine. We'll just move on. And so I love, like, I love the idea of a fresh start. Yeah. Right. I love the idea kind of behind that. I love the idea of like a clean, uh, clean slate. It's a new canvas. We get to paint something and create something totally new this year. Um, but one of the problems I think is that like, it might be a new year, but it's the same you. Right. You, you're still, you still have all the baggage from the previous year and 30 plus four years. And so, um, I think, you know, starting with a clean slate is not actually a thing. I don't think that that's uh, conducive to actually doing anything because Mm -hmm. you don't start with a clean slate. You start with everything that you have done in your previous life. And so kind of starting with a new outlook as opposed to a new slate. Yeah. That's actually a good way to put it, I think, because yeah, that's okay. That actually makes sense because we don't really have a clean slate. Like we do have, like, like I can decide January 1st, I'm going to be healthier, but I'm starting from an unhealthy place. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not just like, oh, ground zero, boom, let's just start being healthy. Right. It's like, nope, now I got to get over. We're not starting with the perfect body that we can then maintain. Like, we're starting with the bodies that we have given ourselves over the past 40 years. And so it's kind of starting from that place and just a new outlook. I've got to get over my Big Mac addiction. <laughs> right? <laughs> well. <laughs> like, I don't get to start the new year without my Big Mac addiction. Right. And that kind of leads me to... Um, so we, we talked a little bit about this earlier. Um, Sarah Bareilles has a song called December that kind of touches on this. And one of the lines that she says is to give yourself a new life. You have to give the other one away. And I think that is very um, poignant. And I think that like for us, it's not just starting over because we're not really starting over. I think it's, letting some things, some habits, some whatever die so that we can start this new thing. I think that that's an important part of whether you call them resolutions or goals or or dreams, whatever you call in the new year. 
is the realization that in order for whatever you want to be born new, in order for whatever you're hoping to come alive in the new year, like something's going to have to die. Right. Right. If your goal is health, then maybe some things that have to die are unhealthy uh, addictions to food or eating patterns or just like, right, the love of pizza at 2 a.m. Like something <laughs> has right. to die right. in order for something new to, to come forward. And that's the whole point of like New Year's resolutions and goals is that I want something different this year. I want my experience this year to be different in some way than it was last year. Right. But you have to let go of what you did last year and do it differently. Sure. Let's talk a little. If you want a different outcome. Yeah. You can't do it the same way. Right. If you approach 2020 the way you approach 2021 and you do nothing different, what you will get is your 2020 outcome. Right. And I think that that's one of the things, um, that's actually a good segue into talking a little bit about, okay, with goals, how in the world do you ever make those become a, a reality? And I think one of the things that you and I have talked about is the importance of intention. Yep. That you can't wish yourself or hope yourself for your dreams and your resolutions to come true. Right. It takes some effort on your part. There's, there's a point when you have to actually do something. Yep. If you have a goal in mind, you have to do, you have to take the steps to make that goal become a reality or it's like, it's not just going to show up on your doorstep and say, here you are. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that that's why it's important to, yes, make a goal. Yes, make a resolution. Yes, think about what you want to come alive this year. But then what are the practical things that you have to do to make that be be real? Right. And what are the practical things that you maybe need to let go of? Exactly right. To so, make that become a reality. So if you watched our video, you know that one of our goals, uh, one of our big goals this year is health. Mm-hmm. Well, we can just say that, right? We can say, you know what, 2021, we're going to lose weight. We're going to get healthy. But we actually have to be intentional about that or it won't happen. Right. I mean, we have to be like, and for me, it's, it's kind of, it's not even just a daily thing. It's almost like an hourly thing. Huh. Like I have to intentionally not eat things that are not healthy. And I have to intentionally move around more, like intentionally exercise. Like I have to make this, um, mental goal as well or yeah. else it just it, it's not going to happen and i think we have to also like say okay things that we know to be true about ourselves that we are convenience eaters we are not necessarily planners we go to what is the easiest mm -hmm. and so for things like lunches or dinners like we have to be intentional about saying you know what one night a week we have to set aside just to make our lunches yeah because if we don't do that we're ordering doordash Right. If we wait until like the morning of to pack our lunches for that day, then we're we're not eating healthy because we're just going to throw something together or we're going to DoorDash. Like we're not totally we're not going to like make a meal at eight o'clock in the morning for our lunch that day. Yeah, so it's, it's not going to happen. No, it's it, like never. <laughs> it will not. Happen. It will not happen. <laughs> and so for us, it's one thing to say to have a 2021 goal. But then what are the additional steps for that goal to become a reality? Right. And I think that maybe that's one of the things we don't put enough focus on uh, sort of a, as a culture. We hear a lot about here's my 20 resolu or 2021 resolution. Here's my goals. Here's my dreams. But then it's like, awesome. Now, what are the steps to make that happen? Right. What are you doing to actually make your dreams, your goals, your resolutions, whatever you want to call them? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to make them happen? Yep. I Completely, exactly agree. Um, Sherry Beth, we've had a lot of resolutions over the years, yeah. right? We've tried a lot of things and we have failed a lot of things. Yep. Um, are there any, other than intention, uh, are there any things that you've noticed when there are goals that we actually achieve? What are some common denominators? Like what, why do some goals get achieved and other goals don't? Um, I think for us specifically, it's because we do things together. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if, you know, if it was just one or the other of us that was trying to eat healthy and exercise more and the other person was eating whatever they wanted and like sitting on the couch, like that makes it so much harder, I think. Yeah. So I think the fact that we're doing this together and that we can make these food choices together, we can make these exercise choices together. Like, I think that is helpful. So I think having like having somebody who is doing this with you mm -hmm. and I don't think it always has to be a, a spouse or like a romantic partner, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I do think that it really is just somebody who's going to uh, like be on the journey with you. Maybe if they're not, maybe even if they're not doing this with you. Right. Somebody who can just like check in with you on a daily or hourly basis if you need it. Like, how are you doing? What are you eating? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you eating today? Like, how have you moved around today? Like what's going on? So 
it's one of the things we talk about a lot at my work is when people make a plan to change their life, right? Like they make a plan. It's like, this is what I'm going to do um, differently. It's like, great. So now what, now what, mm-hmm. right? So, okay, what's the step? It's like, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to eat healthier. It's like, okay, what does that look like for you? Mm-hmm. What are you like, having for, for breakfast tomorrow? Yeah, we have breakfast tomorrow. And then what are you, when are you going to prepare that? When are you going to go grocery shopping to make sure you have that? When right. are you going to, and so it's having somebody to, to not just say, Hey, I'm going to be healthier this year. It's having somebody to, uh, sort of check in with you and make sure that all of those steps that you need to take in order to be healthier this year, right. you're doing right. All right, Sherry Beth, we've talked a little bit about uh, resolutions, goals, how to achieve them. Um, but I think that one of the realities is that more often than not for us, we fail at them more than we succeed with them. Yeah. So how do, <laughs> how do you forgive yourself and move on and still achieve your, your yearly goals without just giving up because of failure? Um, and I think that's where the goal versus resolution comes in, because I feel like it, if it's it's a mental thing for me at least it's a roadblock so if i just call it a resolution when i fail because it it will happen um i think it's easier to be like well we'll try again next year you know even if it's like january 3rd like (laughs) yeah we gave it a try it didn't work like we'll try it again next year (laughs) and so the fact that like you can call it a goal means that if you screw up on january 3rd you still have the rest of the year Mm -hmm. and so like Pick yourself back up and keep going. Like, do better next next time, next meal, next day, whatever. That's one of the things I like looking at things from a yearly standpoint. Um, is that it gives me opportunity to fail and still succeed. Right. Right? And I think it's also healthy to go into it expecting failure. Yeah. If, if you go into, if I go into 2021 expecting, okay, our, our journey is health, I'm not going to mess up. What happens is that when I do... I am so hard on myself and I beat myself up. And then it's easier to just be like, well, forget it then. I've already failed. Mm -hmm. But if I go into the year expecting that, you know what, this year I am going to blow it at some point. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have unhealthy meals. I'm going to make poor nutrition choices. When I, there's going to be nights that I should exercise that I decide, you know what, I'm going to get on Instagram live instead. (laughs) Probably a lot of those nights. Let's let's be very honest. (laughs) But if I go into it expecting that I'm going to fail, but ultimately the end of this year, my goal is that I'm going to succeed. I feel like it gives myself like this grace uh, to, uh, it gives myself the grace and the freedom to fail, but still go on. Yeah. And I feel like for us, um, not necessarily attaching a number to our health. Totally. um, Because I don't think that weight has to do with health. Mm -hmm. I think it has a little bit to do with it, but I don't think that it is the end all. And so if we're trying to do like by you know december 31st 2021 i want to be this weight yeah when it gets to december 15th and we're still 50 pounds away from that we're gonna give up and just like epically fail (laughs) and intentionally epically fail and i i feel like that's not great and so i think you know attaching a number to things is is dangerous and so i think our goal of being healthier in 2021 if we can look back on december 31st and say okay from January 1st to now, we are healthier yep. than we were. I think that's a win. Yeah. And I think that, and looking for different ways to celebrate that along the way, Yeah, right? Maybe it's, you know what? I, I am sleeping better, mm-hmm. right? Or, you know what? My clothes are fitting better. Or, you know what? I'm like, I'm not having headaches or like whatever sort of milestones along the way that you can celebrate. Yeah. I think that that's really important too. I think so too. I think that it's also important, just like what you were saying, Sherry, is to, um, to not over focus on the metrics that you're measuring yourself by. Mm-hmm. And as you were talking, I started thinking about YouTube that for us, if we only celebrated views, mm-hmm. there would be some months that in my mind were a huge success that I would have been like, man, this was a failure. Right. Right. Views were down. So, you know, maybe views were down, but maybe people watched our videos longer or maybe we got some really kind comments that month. Right. And so even when certain indicators might say you're failing, Look for indicators that are still encouraging, mm-hmm. that, that might encourage you to keep going when, when honestly, you might be in a place where you want to give up. Yep. And I think a lot of these resolutions and goals uh, tend to be like focused on more, obviously, this time of the year, mm-hmm. right? Start of the new year, like we were talking about at the beginning. But I also think it's really important um, to not wait until then to start this kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? And so if, if we get to February or March, it's like, you know what? I want to be healthier. And it's like, well, I'll wait till January. <laughs> Like, you're, right. you're kicking the ball down the road quite a bit. Um, 
I, I had a friend of mine who used to say anything that is worth doing is worth doing poorly. Like, don't wait until something is perfect to get started. Just start. Right. Right. Just get going. Yep. Whether it's the start of the week or the next day or whatever. Like, yeah, totally. If you have a goal in mind, then set a start date and stick to it. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I don't think it has to be a January 1st thing. I think it could be a February 1st thing or a March 1st thing or a or Monday. January 23rd. It doesn't matter. Like, just pick a date and that's your date. Yep. And I think that you can also adjust your goals. Uh, okay. If 2020 taught us anything, it's that uh, we don't know what's going to happen. Correct. Right? And so if, you're, if your 2020 uh, resolution or your 2020 goal was like, I'm going to travel more this year, guess what? You probably failed. <laughs> right. Right? Let's be very honest. You probably failed. Yep. Or, or maybe your 2020 resolution was, I'm going to wear less sweatpants. Nope. Nope. That's literally all we wore. That's all we wore. <laughs> all year. Uh, and so obviously, like, sometimes things happen when you have to look at the goals you set and say, okay, there are some circumstances that are out of my control, and I need to adjust this. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think that having these goals always ahead of us is really important. Mm -hmm. Not only to have them, but really to revisit them throughout the year. Yeah. You know, because if, if Sherry and I just say in January our goal is to be healthier and then it's like, well, we'll check in with ourselves on December 31st. See how we did. See how we did. Right. Probably not great. Right. It also just occurred to me, I'm going to insert a little bit. Do um, it. I think it's also important to remember why you set that goal. Oh, talk about that. Um, so for us, for me, I'm going to speak for me. Um, I know that my EDS, my Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, is only going to continue getting worse as I get older. Hmm. Um, it is getting worse as I get older, and I notice it a lot more. And so there are some health benefits to kind of keeping that in check. So there's not there's not a cure for it. There's nothing we can really necessarily do for it except be healthier. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, I think losing some weight and just and making myself move around more is going to long term help me. And so for, I think keeping that at the forefront of my mind when I just really want some pizza mm -hmm. <laughs> is, OK, what is this pizza going to do to me and what are the long term effects of that um, for my EDS? That's really good. I, I, as you were talking, I was thinking about how. Um, one of the memories I have from last summer was that it was a hike that Auburn and I went on. We did the Winter Creek Trail down in Girdwood and I did the whole trail, but boy, there was a part of it where I was like winded. I was like, <laughs> I might die here. <laughs> and I remember thinking in that moment that I live and we live in one of the most beautiful natural places in the world. Mm -hmm. And what a shame to live in Alaska and to not be able to fully enjoy Alaska. Right. Because right? I can't do those hikes. Like my joints will not allow me to, especially at my current weight. Totally. And so, so to me, that's just one of the reminders is that it's not just about being healthy. It's also about the reason we want to be healthy is that there's a quality of life and an enjoyment of, of the life that we have and the place that we live that we want to like more fully take hold of. Right. Right. That's kind of one of the carrots at the end of this. It's not just about what the scale says. It's not just about the way the clothes fit. Uh, it really is about how you're feeling, mm -hmm. right? How your joints are feeling. Right. And then just being able to enjoy this life we have. Yep. I agree. So as we start to wrap up this conversation uh, about resolutions and goals, I think one sort of final challenge I would give everybody, uh, this kind of is looking back on some of the things that we talked about, is what are the things this year that need to change for you, right? What are the things that need to die from 2020 in order for your uh, 2021 goals and resolutions to happen? And yeah, then, what are the steps that you need to take to make your goals happen? Exactly. What are the intentional things that you need to do? You know, if you say, you know what, my goal is to do X, awesome, great. But what are the things that you need to do in order for that to be a reality? So Sherry Beth, Yeah. that's our conversation on New Year's resolutions, goals, why we are not stoked on the word resolutions. <laughs> right. You and I both feel very similar about that. Yeah. That, that it really feels very first of the year forward. Resolution seems very shallow. A resolution seems, seems shallow. Yeah. Whereas a goal or a dream feels like deeper. Deeper, yeah. Yeah. Like a, more long term. That's a good way to put it. More, you, you allow yourself like ups and downs and you will have ups and downs. Yeah, that's but true. But a resolution is just sort of like up, up, up. And then when there's a down, you just are, you're done. Well, you it's quit. like when... You break a resolution, it feels like it's over. Right. It's like, oh, it's a broken resolution, the end. Right. 
Whereas like a goal is the finish line is so far down the road, or I wouldn't say so far, it's far enough down the road that you can stumble and fall and still get up and win. So we were talking about how in the world we want to end these podcast episodes. And just so you know, some of these will be short. Some of these will be long, just depending on how uh, how long we want to talk, how deep we go into a certain topic, mm-hmm. whether we have guests or not. Yeah. How um, many rabbit trails we take. How many rabbit trails <laughs> we take. This one, I will say I'm proud of us. I feel like this is a shorter one, uh, which is probably good for a first episode. Yeah, but we kind of stayed on topic. I'm so proud of us. Go us. And, okay, I'm going to be very honest. It's not so much go us. <laughs> it's really go me. Because <laughs> you are always so good at staying on topic. And I am just so horrible. <laughs> so I, I'm a little proud of myself. I'm very proud of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but as we were talking about how in the heck we want to end these podcasts, we thought, you know what? It'd be fun to figure out some questions that we could ask ourselves every week to sort of fit the culture that we have created here at Leg Life. What are some things that sort of feel like us that we would want to answer every week? And so here is what we're going to do. At the end of every podcast... We are going to basically give ourselves uh, the choice between answering one of two questions. Those questions are, who is someone that has been inspiring to you lately? Like, think about recently in life. Who's someone that's been inspiring to you? Or what is something that has been bringing you joy? So either someone's been inspiring uh, or something that has been bringing you joy. So Sherry Beth, yeah, I'm going to start with you because beautiful ladies first. <laughs> okay. Um, I do want to add in the little caveat that this does not necessarily have to do with the topic that we just discussed. No, it's not at just all. just randomly what has been bringing you joy or who has inspired you. This is just a life check-in. Yep. This is a, this is something that we try to do with each other on a fairly regular basis. Like, hey, how are you doing? What was a highlight? What was, you know, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And so we thought, you know what, let's bring this little element of, of leg life, which is us, yeah. to the podcast. Uh-huh. So, uh, Sherry Beth, who is someone that's been inspiring you or what's something that's been bringing you joy lately? Well, I'm going to talk about the joy. Okay. Uh, something that has brought me joy recently. I just finished A Christmas Carol, and I read it every year, and I, I can't even tell you how many times I've read this story. Hmm. Um, but I get lost in the language of Charles Dickens and the story, and I love it every time I read it. Yeah. Like, there's never a time that I'm just like, ugh, I have to read this again. Like, I always, I'm so excited to read it. I think that's a great one. I'm trying to think if I've ever read A Christmas Carol. <laughs> and I don't I think so. I know you've seen the movie, but I don't know if you've ever read the book. Do you think I would enjoy it? I think, I mean, I love it. I really do. Is the language of the book, because this is one of the things we've talked about with me with possibly reading like Jane Austen, is that the right. language could throw me off. It takes it takes a hot second to kind of get your brain into that rhythm because it is different. Okay. Um, but once you kind of get it, like, it's so beautiful. So Sherry answered the uh, what is something that's been bringing you joy question. So I'm going to answer the who is someone that has been inspiring to you uh, lately. And my answer is maybe a little bit different because it is a couple of people that I've never met before. I've been watching a ton of Kells and John vlogs lately. Yeah. Uh, now, Kells and John are YouTubers that do a ton of Disney content. Really great couple. We learned about them when you guys actually started tagging us in comments saying, like, Kells and John mentioned you in their latest vlog. <laughs> and I was like, well, then we need to figure out who these Kells and John people are. Right. And I started watching them, and they're amazing. They're the cutest people ever. And here's what's been inspiring to me about them lately, is that I watch their channel, and I get so excited for their future on youtube of their channel i just i'm i cannot wait to watch their journey i know very few channels that when i watch them i think i cannot wait to see where this goes over the next year three years five years Mm -hmm. because i really think that there are like big things in store for them yep i think so because of how likable they are how great their content is the kind of stuff they make and so i just find when i watch their videos that i am i am both creatively inspired but I'm also inspired just because when you watch somebody that you just like. I know. Like, I just really want to be, like, friends with them and hang out. And I've never met them. I know. <laughs> so hopefully that changes. But that's who, that's who's been inspiring me lately is uh, Kells and John on YouTube. So, friends, that is it for episode number one of the Leg Life Podcast. I can say already... We have now done as many episodes of this podcast <laughs> as we did of Spill the Teacups. But we have a lot more ideas for this one. We have so many we ideas. We have a whole list in our phones. And I will say that if if you guys have podcast ideas, if there are topics that you would love to hear us deep dive into, yep. if there's topics you'd love to hear our thoughts on, uh, post those over on the Leg Life Facebook page. We would love to hear from you guys. We'd love to know the kind of things that you would like to hear from us. I, for one, am very excited about the future of this podcast. Me too. We have talked about wanting to do this for a while. Yes, we have. And gosh darn it, it's finally happening. And it will be at least one episode. (laughs) 
<laughs> we will have at least one Lug Life podcast episode. <laughs> Friends, you guys know that we love you. We say it all the time. We're so thankful for all of your support, whether it is on uh, YouTube, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram, or even right here on the Lug Life podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform. And friends, we will see you next time.